Hi guys, this is Rob here, and this short PowerPoint video is all about how we process experiences in a helpful way. Not in a way that creates an anxiety or a symptom, not in a way that maintains an anxiety or a symptom, but in a way that actually helps us overcome a particular symptom or overcome a particular anxiety. So if we look at the standard model then, the standard model of this, the standard feedback loop, an event occurs, we react to that event through the filters of our belief systems, our thinking styles, our habitual reactions, and then we experience the event. And that's it. So we, uh, we get barked at by a big dog. We react to that through the filters of our belief systems and we experience the event. Simple as that. So let's say a really stressful event occurs and so now we're outside Tesco's one day and this big dog off a leash starts running towards us, barking at us. Okay. Most people I think would experience a certain amount of fear and panic during that, if not for just because of the shock itself. But the internal person and that process that experience internally thinks to themselves, I'm making myself really stressed, I'm making myself really anxious about this situation. The external person says to themselves, this event was frightening. This made me really anxious. This is making me really scared. So two entirely different reactions, bearing in mind whether that person's processing it in an internal or an external way. They both experience fear and panic, but one processes that experience in an internal way. I made myself anxious about that. The other experiences and process it in an external way. This thing was frightening, it happened to me, it made me really anxious. So if we look at the full feedback loop then, so the internal person then, they say to themselves, they think to themselves, God, I made myself really anxious about that. You actually feel powerful. You feel powerful because you realise that you made yourself feel anxious about it. And although you felt anxious and stressed, you realise that you didn't have to feel that way, that there's something you can do about it and there's something you can do to calm yourself down. You believe that you overreacted to the event and it wasn't that bad after all and that you can manage the situation better next time. So what happens then, you completely calm down about the whole dog thing. You don't create any generalised anxiety or generalised beliefs about dogs. You calm down from the event completely and you feel calm. The external person then that, that um, experienced the event and processed the event as frightening, that it made them anxious, you feel powerless. You believe that it happened to you. And you've now got some kind of belief that this sort of event is scary and frightening. So dogs are frightening. Dogs are scary. You now create anticipatory anxiety about this type of event. So next time you experience this event, you've then got, you've already got preconceived ideas about dogs. You've got a, you've got a little bit of a generalised anxiety, a generalised fear about dogs. So this whole event would be experienced as something bigger. Let's just look at that external part, the left hand side of that loop. Okay, that's that individual. Now let's look at it in relation to dogs. Okay, so here we go. We've experienced a small dog that was a little bit barky, a little bit frightening. We've processed it externally. We come to the conclusion that, that dog was frightening. That dog made me really anxious. The feedback you give yourself from that was that, that dogs are scary. That dog made me quite frightened. It nearly bit me. I should keep away from dogs. Now that has the effect next time you see a dog that you already believe dogs are scary. You've already got this anticipatory anxiety about dogs. You're going to react even more next time to dogs. So now you see dogs as big and scary. React to the event again. Okay, dogs are really scary. You process it externally. Oh my God, that was frightening. You've now got a belief that dogs are really scary. You feel powerless. I was in fear for my life. I must avoid dogs. Dogs are dangerous. Dogs are really big and scary. Don't forget, the dog is actually still only this big. It's our reaction now that's bigger through our thinking styles and our beliefs and our expectations. So what happens next time? Next time, the dogs are huge. Dogs are really scary. Dogs are terrifying. Dogs are dangerous. 
That was the scariest thing ever. Oh my God, that was the scariest thing ever, that dog. I thought it was going to attack me. I thought it was going to kill me. Dogs are truly vicious beasts. When you process that experience, you now have a belief that dogs are terrifying. That dog was going to kill me. People shouldn't be allowed to keep dogs as pets. Dogs are vicious animals. Dogs are awful. People shouldn't be allowed to keep them. This is just a, a dramatised reaction to the event. Going off topic just for a second, I want you to look at these two things here. The first diagram at the top then, just want you to imagine that's a simple internal-external diagram. The more the arrow is to the left, the more internal the person's belief, the more internal the person's responses are. Simple as that. The picture below, I might imagine that's a bar chart, those different coloured lines. And I want you to imagine that's a bar chart based on the unhelpful thinking styles. It's not to scale or anything like that, it's just a, a, a pictorial uh, idea of what a bar chart would look like in relation to the thinking styles. So catastrophic, learned helplessness, hypervigilant, compulsive, negative, paranoid, etc., etc., brooding, you get the idea. So just two general charts, one about a person's internality and externality, and one um, indicating the level, the depth of their, their thinking styles. We're going to look at that in a minute. I want to look at one more picture. So this picture here, this particular chart, shows the relationship between someone's general locus of control or space score and their thinking styles. Got to remember that basically a person's locus of control score relates to how powerful they feel in a number of key areas, a number of key domains in their life. Okay, so let's just say then that going back to our earlier picture, this is about dogs for a minute. Let's say that I'm really quite external uh, in my locus of control about dogs. Dogs are scary. So let's say that I would score 26 out of 30 on the locus of control quiz in relation to dogs. If you go up from 26 on this diagram and go across the left, you're talking about eight or nine out of 10. So that means my thinking styles are in direct relationship. There's a direct relationship between my thinking styles and my locus of control. Generally speaking, um, the more external a person is, the higher they score on the thinking styles. This is um, validated by all of our research to date, particularly around emetophobia and also around smoking. The more external a person is, the more generally higher they score on their thinking styles. And of course, vice versa. The higher someone scores on their thinking styles, the more external they're going to be. Which of course makes perfect sense, because you're only going to have unhelpful thinking styles around situations you don't feel powerful in. You're not going to brood and ruminate. You're not going to catastrophize. You're not going to be hypervigilant. You're not going to be paranoid about giving a speech at a wedding if you've got a really internal locus of control and you don't have any social anxiety. Makes sense. So it's just about recognizing the relationship between your unhelpful thinking styles and your locus of control score. And generally, as your locus of control score comes down, you've got more grip over your thinking. You don't overreact with your thinking styles. Your thinking styles are much calmer. Here's the same picture uh, coloured in, makes it clearer. Here's another example where someone would say, stay, would say it's score 19 or 20 on the locus of control quiz. You can see that on average they'd be scoring about 7 out of 10 across their thinking styles. Now, of course, some of their thinking styles they might score 0 on. Some of their thinking styles they might score 10 out of 10 on. The average across all of them would be about 7. And here, look. If someone scored only 10 on the locus of control quiz, they're only likely to score an average of about three on their thinking styles. That's because they're not creating so much anxiety. They're not worrying, they're not brooding, they're not catastrophizing, because generally speaking, they feel pretty powerful in most of the key areas of their lives. And back to the original picture again there, that diagram. Okay, so let's go back to our dogs again, and let's put on the same picture then, in the top left-hand corner, we've got the internal-external diagram. In the top right-hand corner, we've got our graph about how high the thinking styles are. And then, of course, we've got our, our beliefs balloon on the middle on the right there. Exactly the same wording for everything else. So it's a small dog 
It's a, it was a little bit of a scary event. The dog was quite frightening, but we're going to process it in an external way. That dog was frightening, made me anxious. We're putting a little bit of air into our belief balloon. Okay, we're, we're a little bit external in the top left hand corner and we're starting to have, we're starting to use our unhelpful thinking styles to think and brood and catastrophize and worry and be paranoid about dogs. Which means the next time we see a dog, okay, we're really quite external now about dogs. Our thinking styles are getting quite big, okay. We're starting to really put some air into that belief balloon really starting to believe now that dogs are scary and that we feel powerless and that I was in fear for my life and that I must avoid dogs because dogs are dangerous, got to keep away from dogs. Dogs were scary. And each time we go around this cycle, each time we go around this feedback loop, all of these things are going to get bigger and stronger. So here we are again then. And our beliefs, our, our externality around dogs is really quite huge. Our thinking styles in the top right hand corner there we're scoring eights, nines, tens out of all of it. We're worrying, we're brooding, we're catastrophizing, we're overthinking, we're hypervigilant. Even hearing a dog bark out scared outside, we're going to feel panicky. And there's our belief balloon completely blown up. We've really got a strong belief now. Dogs are terrifying. Dogs are going to kill you. Keep your children away from dogs. People shouldn't be allowed to have dogs as pets. Dogs are vicious animals. Dogs are wild. Dogs are dangerous. Dogs are scary. This is a typical cycle of how someone creates a phobia or a fear about something now if you imagine that someone might brood about dogs five or six times a day you can see how easy it is to create a lot of anxiety about that now link that to something perhaps more common for thrive consultants think about someone with a fear of being sick let's say you are uh, you're going to school one day and a couple of the parents talk about the fact that some of the other children at school have got a bit of a bug. You think, oh, that's a bit yucky, that's, a bit, that's not very nice. If you process it externally and you think, oh, God, being sick is horrible. You start to create a belief that being sick is scary and unpredictable. And think, what can I do to avoid it? You're just starting that sense of externality. Go on to the next screen. Okay. And now you start to think about it. That was awful. And that's horrible. It was unpredictable. And you've now got a big belief that being sick is terrible and unpredictable. And you feel powerless and you feel nervous. And the more you think about it, the bigger it becomes. The more you worry about it, the more it becomes. The more you process that experience, the more air you put in balloon. The more you think about it, the bigger and bigger all the time. To the point where you've got full-blown emetophobia. You believe it's absolutely terrifying. That was the worst experience in your life. You never want to do that again. You've now got a huge belief that being sick is the worst possible experience in the world. And that you do absolutely anything to avoid this terrible thing ever again. The thinking styles in the top right hand corner, as you can see, are all 9 and 10 out of 10. In the top left hand corner, this person is really external. The orange belief balloon is fully blown up. They're panicking, they're thinking, they're worrying about being sick all day long. And if you think that the average person has between 50 to 60,000 thoughts a day, and the average emetophobe, thinks either directly or indirectly about their phobia 95% of the time. This is thousands of times a day a person is thinking about being sick in a way that is promoting their phobia, in a way that is propagating their fear, making their fear bigger, making their phobia worse, making themselves more external, making their thinking styles more extreme all the time, hundreds and hundreds of times every day going through this cycle. You have a look at the next screen then. In orange then, you have the typical um, feedback loop that we've just talked about, creating a phobia. You think it was terrifying, you process it externally. You think that was the worst experience ever, I never want to do that again. And you go round and round and round. Sometimes though, people get quite good at challenging their thoughts and their feelings. And actually they think they're being really, really helpful by trying to cope with their phobia better. Okay, but in fact, what they're doing is what's on the middle chart here, they're actually just maintaining it still. They manage their beliefs a bit, they manage their emotions a little bit, and instead of thinking it was terrifying, they think, well, that was horrible, that was horrible, that was awful, but I'm really trying to cope with it, that was awful, I didn't die, it's okay, I'm trying to keep a lid on it, trying to manage it, trying to control it, doing a bit of firefighting. 
but actually they're still processing it in an external way. So they're still maintaining their belief that being sick is terrifying. And they might think this a thousand times a day or 20,000 times a day. So when you think you're actually helping yourself, you are still maintaining that phobia if you are processing it externally. If you are still processing something as if it was happening to you, then you are maintaining that phobia. The healthy thing to do, the adaptable thing to do, is to process it the green way on the right-hand side where you're starting to overcome it. You react to it, yeah, that was scary. All right, that was scary. That was awful hearing about that. That was scary seeing that person being sick. But this isn't happening to me. This isn't happening to me. I'm doing this to myself. I managed to calm myself down a bit. I can get over this. This fear is not happening to me. I'm doing it to myself. I can calm down. I can learn to get over this. And then that doesn't feed back into a loop, your negative loop. Or if it does feed back into a loop, it's about calming down. Calm yourself down. It was okay. It's not happening to me. I'm doing this to myself. It's not really about being sick. It's about my thoughts and beliefs and I can manage them. I can calm them down. So this green cycle then, every experience, with every experience, this person would start to calm down a little bit. This person would start to get a little bit better. This person's balloon would start to shrink a little bit. Their thinking styles are starting to calm down. Their sense of internality is increasing every time because of the way they're processing the event. You've got to make sure you're processing these events and experiences in a helpful internal way, which will enable you to overcome this phobia, create a sense of internality, create a sense of power, reduce the unhelpful thinking styles, and ultimately learn to thrive. Make sure you're processing these experiences in an internal, helpful way. Thanks very much.